Hi guys, how are you doing? This is Sebastian from Tech Century, and welcome to my long-term review of the Surface Pro 3 by Microsoft as a tablet without the type cover. And in this video, I'm going to show you why this tablet continues to impress me every day, even after using it for roughly two months. So first off, let's take a look at the price and availability. You can basically pick up the Surface Pro 3 from all major retailers and Microsoft.com in the US and I'm referencing Amazon.com prices. So the Intel Core i3 version with 64 gigs of storage and four gigs of RAM retails for $710. The Core i5 version with 128 gigabytes of storage and four gigs of RAM that I have right here for $880. And then there's also a Core i7 version with 256 gigabytes of storage and eight gigs of RAM for $1,440 US dollars. And of course you can also pick up the overpriced type cover for $118. When we then take a look at the box content, we basically just find the Surface Pro 3, the wall charger with the little power brick, the stylus, which is based on Antric technology, and also a quick start guide, as well as, of course, warranty information. Moving on to the hardware, we will find what's, in my opinion, a great design and an amazing build quality. The entire unit is made out of magnesium, which just feels very solid overall. In addition to that, we also have a new and improved kickstand that now stays in place at any angle. So whether you're watching a movie or you're taking notes in one note, it just offers a lot of versatility. And we also have a new 12 inch display with a resolution of 2160 by 1440 here on the Surface Pro 3 with a new aspect ratio of three by two, which is much better to get work done than 16 by nine, which we found on previous generations of this device. On the front, we then also find a capacitive Windows button to get back into the modern UI or Metro UI. And we also find five megapixel cameras on the front and the back, which are decent, but nothing great. A full size USB 3.0 port for transferring files with a USB stick, hooking up a printer or a mouse or keyboard. And we also have a micro SD card reader on the back for storage expansion. In addition to that, also a headset jack, a mini display port to connect an external monitor and also on the bottom a cover port to connect the type cover. So especially if you use this device as a tablet, you have much more ports than on any other device. While I've heard bad things about the Surface Pro 3 display in the past, I certainly didn't find anything to complain about. I think the 12 inch diagonal is perfect for the full Windows experience and especially with the new 3 by 2 aspect ratio, it's much much better than just a regular 10 inch display with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. On top of that we also have great viewing angles and a good brightness and also a great touchscreen performance whether using one or more fingers and in addition to that in combination with the amazing front-facing speakers that we will find on the left and right side of the Surface Pro 3 display. It's just a great experience also for watching movies or videos. In terms of performance, the Surface Pro 3 in general with the Intel Core i5 processor always felt fast in my experience, but even if you're just running a few apps like Spotify in the background and then just browsing the web, and you're also having a high display brightness, the fans kick in and the device gets relatively hot. Now this also means that thermal limits are reached with the Surface Pro 3. So for example, it couldn't keep up a 2.9 gigahertz boost speed of this Core i5 processor for a long time. So this is also why I think the Intel Core i7 version of this device doesn't really make much sense because while the i7 is faster on paper, you really run into just thermal issues with the Surface Pro 3 and the cooling system. So I think the i5 is a pretty good choice. And I just in general wouldn't buy really the Surface Pro 3 for processor intensive tasks like video editing or maybe even photo editing. Now another aspect that I was worried about was the RAM. You can basically just get four gigs of RAM on almost any configuration of the Surface Pro 3, except if you go for the uh, maxed out version with the Intel Core i7 processor, then it offers eight gigs of RAM, but that also resets for like $1,400, which is just very expensive. In the end, I have to say, even while running multiple applications at one time, four gigs of RAM were absolutely fine, and I didn't have any slowdowns related to the RAM of this device. Now, while Microsoft claims a battery life of up to nine hours for the Surface Pro 3, from my experience, around six to seven hours were more realistic with regular usage at a higher brightness though. And unfortunately, the Surface Pro 3 doesn't show you the remaining time in minutes when you use the device and click on the battery. Now, there are third party applications that can do that, but still I would have liked to see this integrated here as well. 
and the standby time overall was very impressive as well. When I didn't use the Surface Pro for like two days, it went into a deeper sleep and when I powered it back on, it barely lost any percentage of the power or the remaining charge. So I was very impressed with that and charging is also very easy due to the magnetic connector. Just like the performance, also the software is a big mix back here on the Surface Pro 3. You have a good to excellent experience in the modern UI, especially with all the nice apps, for example, like Mail, also the News app. But once you really get to the desktop for installing regular apps that were optimized for desktop usage, then the Surface Pro 3 isn't really that great anymore. And a lot of the text also just looks blurry because of the high resolution of this panel that we find here on the Surface Pro 3 and the apps just aren't optimized for that. But then again, if you're mainly using the Surface Pro in the modern UI, which I did, then the experience is quite good. Before we actually get to my verdict of the Surface Pro 3, I quickly want to reiterate the positive, neutral and negative aspects that I found while using it. First off, of course, the positive. We have an amazing screen here on the Surface Pro 3, a good battery life. The extra USB port in the power brick is a very nice addition so that you can charge your smartphone while charging the Surface Pro 3. The micro SD card slot on the back is also great for storage expansion. It's not in the way and just an easy and convenient way to just expand the storage of 128 or even 64 gigabytes, which certainly isn't too much. And we also have fantastic uh, stereo speakers on the front, which are amazing for watching videos or listening to Spotify or other music. And just overall, it's an incredibly light and therefore great to carry around package and I really preferred to carry around the Surface Pro 3 in comparison, for example, to my MacBook Pro 15 inch. Now in terms of neutral points, there's just one and that's the magnetic charging connector. While it's a good idea, it just isn't as good as, for example, the MagSafe by Apple. It's a little bit flimsy to put in the right way and just overall, I don't like the connector as much as the MagSafe. So that's kind of a neutral point, but still a magnetic connector, in my opinion, is still better than a regular connector. So if somebody trips over your cable, your device shouldn't fall over or fall off the table. In terms of negative aspects, again, fan noise. Um, the fans are kicking in way faster than I would want it to. Um, when I'm, for example, listening to Spotify and browsing the web, I don't want to hear fans, but unfortunately that's the case here on the Surface Pro 3. The lack of optimization, especially the blurry text, is just something that makes the very nice display of the Surface Pro 3 look bad at times. And the stylus that's included just isn't really as useful as I thought. It performs great in apps like OneNote, but that's also basically the limit of it. So I thought I would be using the pen a lot more, but I didn't. That's also why I don't have like a dedicated section for it. And in addition to that, we also just don't have even a slot for the stylus. So you always have to carry it around separately and you always have to take into consideration that it also retails for like $50. So if you lose it, it's not really cheap to replace. So not the biggest fan of that. But now it's time for my verdict. And as you guys can probably already tell, I'm overall very impressed with the Surface Pro 3 and I never regretted purchasing it. And it might sound a little bit weird, but for me, using the Surface Pro 3 feels like the future. And while the future isn't perfect yet, I think Microsoft is on a great way uh, with the Surface Pro series. And I'm really looking forward to the next generations of this device especially maybe an Intercore M version of the Surface Pro 4 that lacks a fan altogether, which also makes for silent operation. And this just wraps up my review. Again, I really enjoy this device. And if you're thinking about picking one up, maybe because it's cheaper now, then I think it's a great time. Let me know what you guys think of the review and the Surface Pro 3. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it and also subscribe to the channel for many more reviews in the future. My name is Sebastian. See you next time.